Hey guys. <laughs> Hi. Hi, my name is Miss Blair and I teach the MedTech program. It's 2.15, we're missing a few people, but I'm gonna get started anyway. So I'm gonna start off by telling you a little bit about myself. Um, this is like my 16th or 17th year of teaching MedTech. And I'm also a registered nurse and I work at the hospital. I work in the ER at Toledo Hospital. And I work, I'm usually about every other Saturday. I pick more hours up in the summer because I love nursing so much. I like to continue working. Um, this program, because I am a nurse though, this program is a diversified health occupations class, meaning that if you want to go to, into something like maybe a physician, maybe you want to be a nurse practitioner, maybe you want to be a pharmacist, sports medicine, maybe you want to be a vet, it is opened up to all kinds of medical careers. I would say probably only about 50% of my students end up um, wanting to go into nursing, the rest of them have um, other medical professions that they are interested in. So this class is a two-year commitment. Your junior year, you are in here first through third period, and your senior year, you're in here sixth through eighth period. And that may change next year. It may um, flip-flop, but I don't know yet. And when you're a junior, I teach you anatomy and physiology, and I focus a lot on the disease processes related to anatomy and physiology. I teach you a lot of skills. The skills range, they're simple, and they range anywhere from um, washing your hands, making a bed, to doing the blood pressure, to using stethoscopes, and to um, doing EKGs. 
And when you're a junior back in the normal world before COVID, I take the juniors on a lot of field trips and we go to places like the nursing homes, we go to the hospitals, we go to Life Flight, we go to um, 911 lab. I like to kind of get you around so you can get a feel of the different types of occupations that are out there. And the highlight of the year is I'm um, going to the cadaver lab at UTMC. And at that lab, they have um, many um, bodies that are there for the use of the medical field to learn. And we actually get our gloves on and get right in there and um, you're able to touch the body and we pass around the heart so you can look at a per real person's heart and the, the brain and um, et cetera. Then the senior year, it's the period six through eight and back in the real world, two days a week, the seniors will go out and they'll job shadow and they'll go to places like um, Toledo Hospital, St. B, St. Charles, um, the different veterinarian offices. Um, they'll go, I've had them at Oregon Fire Department. I've had them at Oregon Police Department. I've had them at nursing homes. I've, um, I've even had somebody at UTMC. She loved the cadaver lab so much that she um, job shadowed in the cadaver lab two days a week. Now that's not my thing, but she really liked it. So I try to set up your job shadowing so you can do things that you are interested in. Also during the junior year, I teach STNA, State Tested Nurse Aid. So when you graduate, you would have your STNA um, license. And for that, you can work in a nursing home or you can even work in a hospital. You can work in a nursing home um, while you're still in high school. So last year, when we were sent home because of COVID, I had several students that got jobs in nursing homes right away working. And the STNA, even though it's called State Tested Nurse Aid, it is a, a very good thing to certificate to have if you are thinking about being anything in the medical field because it's an introduction to working in the medical field and you learn how to take care of patients and you learn how to um, do different types of skills. So it's a really good introduction. If you're gonna be a doctor and you were an STNA at one time, that is gonna be a great um, practice for you to have had. And then some of it, like even physical therapy, they want people to have that STNA. And then also during their senior year, I teach pharmacology because pharmacy is something that is needed to know going into the medical field. You need to know your different medications. And I teach nutrition. I usually teach nutrition like the last quarter of the year. And seniors also do a capstone project as well as the juniors do a mini capstone project. And they go out and they job shadow um, one day and they do a project on that. Another thing that is, is a big part of MedTech is HOSA. HOSA is a career and tech club that is for students going into the medical field. And we do competitions. We have a regional competition coming up in February and all the juniors are gonna be competing in that. And they're doing different things from taking a test, like in um, behavioral medicine, taking a test in that, to physical therapy, to sports medicine, where they, they do a test and then they have to do some skills. They're doing presentations. They're doing health education where they teach a class and they do a presentation. And they're doing community awareness where they're doing um, a project at one of the basketball games and they're doing a presentation on that. So the top three in regionals will proceed on to state competition and state, state competition, unfortunately, again this year, it will be virtual. I can't wait till it comes back to normal, but they will be competing in that. And then the top three in state competition will move on to international competition that, that right at this moment, it is still scheduled to happen at the end of June in Florida. And every year I have students that make it on to international competition. And usually the students that make it on are ones that thought that they would never ever compete in an international competition. And we've gone to Florida, California, Tennessee, Texas. So we've gone all over the place um, doing that. And even one year, I had a group doing community awareness that got first place and there was 150 competitors in that and they never thought that they would um, do that well. And I had another student that was here that she had to leave because she was, um, has to work, but her name is Lindsay and she right now is um, going through the process and applying to be a HOSA state officer. So I'm really hoping that that happens. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you around the room and I'm gonna show you some of the things that I teach in med tech. Some of the things happen your junior year and some of the things happen your senior year. The first thing that I'm going to show you is the Hoyer lift. 
and the Hoyer lift is something that's used. What do you do? How do you get somebody up out of bed that can't move? So I have Max here. He's a patient right now. You just gotta assume that Max can't move and Max has to get out of bed and get into a wheelchair right here. And how does he do it when he is bedridden? So you guys can talk about what you're doing and explain. Okay, so at first, we'll Max over. So when you're working in healthcare, you always have to work with teams. So you have to um, be a team player. So Heaven and Dominic are working together. They're hooking those in there and they're very strong so they can hold his body weight. I think, I believe this is up to 360 pounds this can hold. Is there like a heavier one that can hold? Yes, there is a heavier one. And there's ones also that are electric. If you guys are coming into this class right now and doing the sophomore career day, I would get volunteers and you guys get to try this out. Like What'd you say? People that are really heavy. Somebody was doing, I don't know. Somebody pop up. Oh, good. We'll probably somebody just find in a little late. All right, here goes Max. And you always have to have two people when you work this. And you actually, if you're working, doing, using this in a nursing home, you have to be 18 years old to work it. Eighteen years old to work at a what? A nursing home? No, no 18 years old to use that machine. machine. Yeah. And the seniors, because I don't have any seniors in here today, but the seniors have already done this skill. 14 class days that you guys have been here. So I gotta make sure that Max doesn't hit anything. And, and um, Dominic is just holding his legs so he doesn't bump into anything. And you can see that the, the legs down there spread apart so they can get around the wheelchair. And Dominic's making sure that that doesn't bang his head. All right, and he made it safely. Okay, thank you, Max. Okay, over here, we're going to show you another skill. And these girls are going to talk to you about this skill. So this is the stand-up lift. It's to help get a patient from a wheelchair to a normal, regular chair. And to do it, you're going to lock the wheelchair and then pull this forward. And then you're gonna lock it. And lift it. And then you're gonna push these back and pull these back. So then she can sit down. And then unlock these. And roll over to the other chair. Hannah would really like it if they would take her around class like this, around <laughs> school. And then put it here, lock the wheels. Unlock and then pull it out. And that's it. Okay, thank you. All right, so part of the junior year is they learn how to teach the babysitting class, and that normally runs in November. But unfortunately, due to COVID this year, we were unable to have the babysitting class. And the babysitting class is, a, is just a great experience. I gotta take this thing out. The babysitting class is just a really good um, learning experience for them. They actually teach the whole class and the kids love it because it's the high school kids teaching them and it's um, fifth through eighth grade. Well, fortunately though, for today's sake, some of these kids took the babysitting class when they were just children. Now they're, you know, 
old. And they are going to tell you about it because they took it and we hope to be teaching this by the end of the school year. So here you go, Alexis. Hi, I'm Alexis. This is Carl and Daphne. And part of the babysitting class that we do, we usually do it in the fall, but this year we want to do it in the spring just because of COVID. And part of the class is you're just learning the really basic techniques and ways to babysit safely, like CPR, first aid, just how to make like a meal so that overall it's a really safe and you know how to do it safely. And we also do um, part pet sitting. So you learn how to do CPR on a dog and just really common things that you'll need so that you can babysit safely. And Hello, I'm Hannah, and this is what our pet setup will look like. Um, so this is a dog that we use to show how to give CPR on it. You usually pull the tongue out, and then you breathe it through its nose. And then this is like the type of pets that you might experience while babysitting. And then over here are breakfast things that the children may get when they puke outside. And it like shows you how to treat them and all that. So we also teach like different kinds of bleeds, so from arteries, capillaries, and veins, and then how to treat those specific bleeds. So like applying pressure and raising above heart level, and then how to prevent the bleeds too. And then you also learn the different kinds of burns, like first degree, second degree, and third degree burns. And that goes hand in hand with when we have you cook a meal in the class and we try it for you. Okay, the next skill that I'm going to show you, or they're going to show you, is an, how to start an IV. And this is one of the advanced skills, and this is usually done at the last quarter of the senior year. Hi. Okay, so when you start an IV, first we're going to put this rubber band-like thing. A tourniquet. The tourniquet, yep. We're going to put it at the top of the arm to restrict blood, blood flow. And you're not gonna tie it all the way, just so it's easier to take off. So when you're done with that, you wanna find the vein. And you don't want like a hard vein, and you don't want super soft one, you want one that's like around the middle. And once you find it, you're gonna to wanna to wipe it with an alcohol wipe to sterilize it. You wanna do it in a circle. So after that, this is the needle, and there's 20 gauge, 22 gauge, and 18 gauge. And the 18 gauge is used when you wanna get fluids through your system quickly. And the 22 gauge is commonly used in children. So when you take it out, there's like a safety cover on it, because the needle's right there, so take that off. And I don't really know if you can see it, but there's like a little hole right there. And that is called a bevel. And when you insert the needle, you want that to be pointing upwards. And you also, when you insert the needle, you want it to be parallel with the arm. So you're gonna feel for the needle and hold it, or for the um, vein and hold it. And then you insert this pretty far. And then you push this into it. And then you let go, pull it out. And then you whack the needle so it's not poking out. Put it in the sharps container. So then, after that, you take this kind of adapter. Yep. <laughs> and you just attach it to that pink part. Just so you can get medicine through here easily. And then you take whatever you're injecting. This is just saline. And you attach it to here. And oh, take that <laughs> off and inject it just to make sure it's going in the vein. Just push it. Okay, and then <laughs> you just take this tape-like thing and you just put that over the needle just so everything stays in place. And then after that, if you wanted to um, hook up the hanging fluid, which you see right there, then you would just do it the same way you did for the saline and just connect, oh, take off the cap and connect it to here. And then you take the outside lining of this one off and then you take just more tape and 
Just put it over the wire so there's nothing to snag on. That's, That's it. it. All right, thank you to them for doing that. So um, that, again, I said is a, is a senior skill. The juniors just learned a skill this week, and I'm gonna show you that. They actually learned it, let's say what today's Wednesday. They learned it on Monday and Tuesday, and that is an EKG, and they're going to tell you about that. All right, we can't even really see us, all right. Okay, this is an electrocardiogram, or EKG. It measures the amount of active electricity in your heart. Okay, so here is here is a live feed of his heart, of everything that's going on. It's measuring the electrical pulses. This is what the electrocardiogram prints off. It looks normal, and he looks pretty good. All right, so come with me. <laughs> and here are the 12, 12 leads. Here's like the right arm, um, the left arm, V1, V2, V3, V3, V6, and he has the ones down on his legs. So it's, yeah, it's just like a 10 lead. But yeah, that's that's really it for that. It's EKG. He walked away. There you go. Okay, great. So... I want to know now. So some, I, I asked these guys some of the questions, and you guys can answer for them. Now, these are juniors, and they've only been here, I, I just figured it out, I think 14 days you've actually been in school. But some of the questions that people always want to know, it's three periods, and that seems like a very long day. So I'm going to tell you this a little bit, typically, you know, back in the real world, how the day would go. So the first period that you're in here would be a notes time. So I'd be teaching you and you'd be taking notes. The second and third period, and this is both for junior and senior year, I would be doing teaching you skills. And you would be doing skills, you'd be working on HOSA, you'd be working on the babysitting class. So the second and third periods are periods that you're actually getting up and doing hands-on. So um, do you guys have any questions? I have the students here so they can see questions too if you want to put them in the chat. If you have any questions you want to ask me, this is the time to do it. Usually, like, you would think that three periods like a long time to be in one class, but it's really not. Like, it goes by so fast. Yeah, it goes by really fast. And if you're in uh, humanities, then you won't be in the third period, so it, it goes by even quicker. So it's actually kind of tricky because you have to get all your stuff done in the first two periods. And the three periods are, like, you use them. You don't really do, like, nothing. So you can put questions in the chat if you want. The first group that I had put a lot of questions in the chat. And you can just send it to me privately and all these kids can we'll sit here and we'll answer it. Generally, we won't answer it to you specifically so you don't feel like you're being singled out. I'm sure you have questions. Can you guys think of any other questions that they might be interested in? Um, lot, most of the time, MedTech is overbooked, so I, I mean, most of the time, all the time it is, but it's, and I have to cut students, and some of the things that I look for when we cut students, it's your, if you took intro, if you took med term, if you have any disciplinary issues, if you, um, what your attendance is like, because attendance is very important for when you go job shadowing your senior year, and we also look at your GPA. Now, does that mean if you didn't take intro and med term, you won't get in the program? No, that doesn't mean that at all. I do. All, I always have students in here that didn't take med term that um, end up in the program. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. But it definitely helps you if you did take it. So any questions? You know, it'd be so nice when we're back to a real world. See, you guys look like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I will I also have to remind you that you all were emailed a Google form and you need to complete that too for today. Well, I'm really glad that you signed up. I know that, um, you know, we didn't have a lot of people signed up, but we're really thankful for the ones that did. And I'm really um, proud of my students because they did a really awesome job of showing you things. So if there's not any questions, um, I hope you have a good day and I hope to see you in the future. And don't forget about that form. <laughs>
Okay, all right, I'm going to end this.